Hello and welcome to a short video. Today I would like to give you an overview about our new Webhook integration. Um, as you know, there are payload decoders for lower band and we've taken the concept from payload decoders um, to all of our integrations. So also for our new API or for the API devices. In this video, I would like to give you um, a short introduction to that, what you can do with it, and also yeah, to point you at the documentation where you can find more information about that. So first of all, let's start. I've created a basic empty workspace for that, and we add our new first device. So first of all, in the device type selector, you choose the API type. A um, couple of things have changed here. You have now two options here, which you can choose from. So the first is new product and existing products. This is an empty workspace, means that there is no product or device in it. So we are going to create a new one. So what actually is a product? Well, basically a product is, um, it holds the payload decoders and the fields and the dashboard, and you can add a device to a product. You can have one product and one device, but you can also just add multiple devices to one product, and all of these devices automatically um, inherit the dashboard settings, um, the payload decoder, and the number of fields, and so on. So this makes it easy to design a product, ship it, and then everything looks the same. Um, okay, so let's call that API um, demo product go ahead next one is we um, now need to add a device we can add also two devices here but simply we just want to add one device um serial number um we auto generate this this will bring a uuid but we could also provide our own so like this one here and this is our api demo device let's make this uppercase zero one um i'm going to select the free plan and we add this device so we're all set, the device has been created. You can see this in the device list and we are now going to open this up by clicking on the device. Um, we head directly over to the configuration and we scroll down a little bit until we see the new things here. And this looks different from the old API device. So you've got an API configuration for a serial number. Um, you can override that, more on that later. And you get also the HTTP payload decoder section. So this is the decoder that you can use to decode the data which is coming through an endpoint URL. And this URL, we can find this here directly under that editor. So this URL has been created for the product that we just added to this workspace here. And um, this URL, you can use that on your third-party IoT platforms, directly on devices or on anything else, um, tool, software, whatever. Um, and I'm now going to show you how this works. So you can copy this endpoint URL. I've already done that and imported this here in a tool called RegBin, which is pretty easy to use to simulate stuff. So I've pasted this here and we can simulate um, HTTP calls. We are sending this now. Data cake response with 200 and thanks because it's very thankful that you just brought in the data. <laughs> and um, in the logs, you can see the latest requests. So we can now see here that request from the RegBin tool. And yeah, let's start decoding this content here into actual data for that device. So first of all, we need to define a payload decoder. We do that. Um, simply by writing JavaScript code, very similar to lower band encoders and or decoders. And um, on the side bar here, you see the objects that are available for your requests. So first thing that we do is um, we are going to paste this once more here so we can um, simulate that. Um, we need to um, decode the payload. So we need to um, parse this into a JSON because we're sending JSON and the JSON information that we are going to send is embedded into the body variable here. So we access the request and we access the body. And to see what we are doing, we are returning it directly as this payload here. So we can um, use this tool at the bottom and paste the body and try the decoder and we can see, okay, it returns um, the information. So next thing is very important for API decoders because as I've said, this URL is not linked to a device, it's to a product. And the payload decoder is running on that product. So in your payload decoder for API devices, 
you need to make sure to route the information, route the information to the particular devices belonging to that product. And this is exactly where the serial number um, kicks in. So um, what we are going to do here is we are, um, first of all, uncommenting this one here, and we are also extracting the serial from the payload, um, sorry, payload, um, which is serial. And we are going to extract the information here for temperature, um, which is the payload dot temp. So now when we return data to data cake, normally like on LoRaWAN or on the particle payload decoders, you simply have field and value because the mapping is done automatically on our backend. In this case, um, you have a third option here. You need to set that, it's required, it's the device. So, and in here, we are putting in the serial number. The field is temperature and the value is temp. Um, we can now save this and we can also create a field for temperature, save this as well. And if I now simulate this once more, I can see, okay, um, it's forwarding to API 0001. It's the recognized measurement and the temperature. If I would change the serial number to 0002, it will say that the device could not be found because there is no device existing except for I go above, change the serial number to 002. And if I try this once more, it finds that device. So this is the important aspect here. This URL is not per device, it's per product. And you need to route the information um, based on the serial number into the devices. This is very common and adapts to how um, IoT platforms forward their data because they always include like a device ID, an ICC ID, or a serial number. And you can use that to override this here. Um, but let's go back and change this once more to that one. Um, simulate this once more. Yeah, it's all fine. We set this as well here. Um, we save this just once more. And let's go back to the dashboard and simply create like a short value widget where we can select the temperature in here. Um, nothing important, make it a little bit larger. And when we now go back into the online API testing tool and we call that once more here or send it, it will give us a thanks. And then we can see the data is here and we can also, yeah, give it like a little bit different data in here. It says thanks once more. Um, so let's go into the fleet. And now we are going to create another device, but instead of creating a new product, we are choosing the existing product in here. Press next. This one is now called API 0002 and the name is API, what did I call that? Demo device 02, right? Um, we press next, free plan, add this device and they are all added here. We can select the product here so we can see that they are both into that product. And if I now um, set this to number two and do like a different data here, we can send that it says thanks you're welcome and if i'm now into that device we can see that this device is also um, has received the data so it's online yeah that was the short overview if you have any questions or trouble getting this started please contact us we are um, happy to help and thanks for watching and stay tuned